Uh, hi, I'm Jasper Virgo, and I run the Game Development Club. So right now we're doing a lot of introductory stuff. I've been getting everyone started with uh, a program called Godot, which is a game engine that you use for making mostly 2D games. It can do 3D too, but we've mostly been touching on 2D. My hope is that a little bit later on, we're going to be getting more into making kind of games as a group or individually as sort of more of a critique. Because we have a lot of people at a lot of different skill levels. Some of them don't know any coding. Some of them are pretty experienced. So getting everyone, you know, caught up with kind of the basics of how to make games. What do you mean by a critique? So kind of a, if you've ever heard of a game jam, sort of like that without the time pressure, a game jam would be, you know, you're given a prompt of something like up and down would be a prompt. And then a bunch of developers kind of get together and then make a game based on that prompt. And then after that, they all look at it and kind of think about, you know, how did this game turn out? That's a word that's used by game developers, which means its own thing, critique. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much the same as you would do in something like art or writing. It's just looking at it and looking at what might be improved and what's good about it. You make games based on a prompt, or this is what you would do. It's an example of something that I'd like to do in the future. I'm still trying to catch everyone up, so we'll see where everything ends up. That's kind of a long-term goal. I'll probably be very long gone from the school by then. <laughs> um, so is this a new club? It started last year, so not entirely new. Back then we had a lot less people, because now I think we have around eight people. And by the end of last year, we only had like four or five that came consistently, at least. Originally it was started by Jack, who was a senior last year, and I inherited the position this year. When we started, I think it turned a lot of people off because we didn't have any kind of like teaching of how to actually make games. It was more just like, if you already knew how to do it, we just kind of jumped right in. Uh, this year I kind of marked it more as no experience necessary. So people are learning how to use this program to make games? Yeah, so the program we've been using is called Godot, spelled G-O-D-O-T. It's what's called a game engine, which is just a program that's designed to kind of make it easier to make games. It's got a bunch of tools that are pretty commonly used. It's easier than just going straight in and coding the whole thing from scratch. Uh, in terms of game engines, Godot is one of the smaller ones. On one hand, that means it can't do quite as much as some of the bigger players in the field, but it is really good for beginners because it's pretty simple to learn. You don't really need to know any coding or any complex things to really get started in it. It's just kind of drag and drop. Similar to very advanced Scratch, I would say. Can you create the kind of games that people like to play? In the last, I want to say, 15-ish years, a lot has actually changed in game development in that regard. Being able to make your own game from scratch wasn't a thing that really existed 20 years ago. You'd have to have a studio with a lot of money and time to make uh, a game that could be comparable to those big names out there. But nowadays, with tools like Unreal Engine and Unity, you can make a game with enough time and effort that's of the same quality as any of those big games that you've heard of, like Skyrim or Cyberpunk, Overwatch, any of those. You can make a game of the same quality and size if you're willing to put in the work and the time. In our class, we haven't gotten to that point quite yet. Some of the things that are done in bigger AAA games, unsurprisingly, are fairly advanced, and they take quite a bit of work to do. So I'd say eventually, yeah, you can totally make games that you would play. But for some of the larger games, like uh, what we would call a AAA game, a game made by a large studio, those would take a lot of time and work to make. Like music, you're not at the level that you could make your favorite music. Yeah. In game development, a lot of it's the same things that you would be doing uh, in a larger studio. You're just, in a larger studio, you're doing it more, and for like larger games, you're doing it bigger and with larger scales. But with those larger scales, it means that if you aren't very good at it or you're not just experienced enough to be well experienced, errors are going to get amplified by the size. Because if you make a small game and it's a little bit messy, the code, it works, but it's not quite industry standard, I think would be a way to put it. It's fine, but if you start scaling that up and you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those 
programs all running at once, it starts to become really hard to work on it at a large scale. And so just getting the experience of making those little projects over and over again until you're good enough at it that you can scale it up to those big, large projects, I think is really the key. I'm interested what you can tell us about like people having a career in this or people like just selling a game they make and making lots of money or anything about that, like career path. Game development as a career is kind of a broad term. The industry of game development has hundreds of careers in all sorts of fields. When people typically think of game development, they're thinking of the actual programming and making the game part. And for that, you would be called a game programmer. It's a pretty in-demand job nowadays. There's quite a few. But some other jobs that are pretty similar and are still in the industry are, for instance, a technical artist. That's someone who makes tools that they're the things you see, pretty much. If you ever see a beautiful field in a game or a huge building, a technical artist usually designed that. Not to be confused with a modeler who actually made the 3D model for that program or a sound designer who did all the sound work, etc. In terms of working as what we'd call an indie dev, a developer without a large studio behind you, just a small team or by yourself, there's a lot of tools that have come out in the last, I want to say, 20 years to let you actually make a game and publish it and sell it and actually make money. Uh, Steam, for instance, I'm sure anyone who plays video games has heard of it, is a distributor and almost anyone can put a game on there if there's just like some basic quality checks and a small fee. And then you can put your game up for whatever price you want. And if it gets popular, of course, you can make a lot of money with it. A lot of people do do that. Um, but again, it's, it's something that's going to take some time and experience to get good at. And in terms of careers, being an indie dev can be a little bit risky, whether you actually end up with a good game and getting the experience to get to that point can be hard as an indie dev. So a lot of studio or a lot of people go to a larger studio. Uh, there's a bunch that I could name off the top of my head. Valve, Epic Games, or Blizzard are some examples. And they're just huge companies. They have, you know, thousands and thousands of employees that all are making games. It's a great way to get experience if you want to be an indie dev or just a great solid career path if you're interested in not. So do you have ambitions in uh, this field? Yeah, I mean, the dream would be to make my own games and run a little indie studio. But more realistically, I'm looking to be a game programmer and technical artist uh, in the future at probably a larger studio. And so this uh, game club, is game development club, is a way to start? Yeah, I think for a lot of people, it's a great introduction if you're, you know, you like playing games or you've ever wanted to make them, it's a great way to you know, get a feel for it. Dip your feet in the water, I guess would be a simple way to say it, with some you know, instruction and guidance. It can feel often if you try to do it all on your own, like you're just jumping into a pool. And if you don't know how to swim, it's not gonna turn out very well. My goal is to kind of get people interested or people who are already interested, give them a stepping stone to do what they want in the future. Cool, who's the teacher? Well, I kind of teach everything. Uh, Mr. Finkel, our advisor, is also the teacher in charge of all of the programming classes here, so he can help out too. But he's not as well-versed in the engines or game development as a whole as I am. So I've been kind of taking everyone through it. How do you join? Yeah, so we don't have any formal like admissions process or anything. We host our club every Tuesday after school. It's about an hour from 3.30 to 4.30. And you can just show up and we'll get you started. If you already know what you're doing, great. You can hop right in then. If not, we'll get you started, we'll get you up and running, and hopefully we'll all have fun. Thank you so much, Jasper. It was good talking to you. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here.